A uh, quick uh, update on my uh, Jaguar XJR EV conversion. Today I'm working on a very important bit, it's a drive shaft. So since the uh, new Lexus transmission is uh, quite a bit longer than the original one and in addition to that I wanted to move uh, transmission as far back to the car as possible to have more room in the engine compartment for the batteries and other components, I do have to shorten the drive shaft. Uh, so I started working on this. I uh, made some preparations. I so I located first of all transmission in the position where I wanted, so I could precisely measure uh, the new length of the drive shaft, and uh, then I was able to uh, cut it and trim it and get it ready for. Uh, welding so uh, it is a little, little bit challenging because it is very precise uh, work uh, uh, you cannot allow for this drive shaft to go out of balance or have any run out so it it really very 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 precise and uh, in the end I wasn't sure that I would be able to uh, accomplish this successfully uh, I assume that if it didn't work all that well that it would just be a temporary drive shaft for uh, um, uh, just for testing that I could use for a little bit um, uh, but I, I like the challenge so so I decided to uh, take on this uh, but definitely it is something that one of those very few things that are probably left uh, better for uh, professionals uh, but again, uh, I, I got some some experience uh, with that kind of work, so I, I decided to give it a try. So let me show you a couple of things, what, what I did and what I learned uh, during this, this process. So here it is, drive shaft already cut uh, to appropriate length it's in two pieces. It is a stainless steel drive shaft, which is actually pretty, pretty good. I got some... Uh, experience with welding stainless steel and welds really nicely especially with with TIG uh, the first challenge was to get really precise cuts uh, there's a couple of reasons I mean it's always good to have a precise cut but in this particular case it is absolutely uh, necessary that those cuts are are really uh, precise in the square. Um, this is to prevent uh, warping during the welding process. I built this contraption here so I can align this shaft on this uh, heavy gauge aluminum uh, angle that I have. I will show you briefly what it's gonna look like basically. I'm gonna align those two pieces together and I was able to make this cut really precise so I don't have really any any gaps uh, around and and this is uh, again to prevent warping uh, uh, during the welding process because when you weld it the weld when it cools down it contracts and if there were any gaps basically it would pull those two pieces together and uh, will would get it out of shape so th this is absolutely critical and I, I measured the best I could and I made the best cut I possibly could and still there's no guarantee even when I weld it it's gonna be perfect but this is as, as good of the job as I can do in my uh, garage I, I am pretty optimistic based on some of the uh, uh, testing that I have done on a uh, scrap uh, the, the leftover pieces that I cut out from here it actually turned out pretty good so I think there is a good chance it's gonna work so I'm gonna use my my TIG um, for this uh, job and uh, and I'm actually gonna use uh, fusion technique uh, fusion welding technique uh, to weld those two pieces together uh, the difference is that I'm not going to use any filler rod. I'm not going to provide any filler. Basically, those are 
such a good fit um, here they're so close together that really there shouldn't be any gaps basically I'm gonna heat it up with the torch and it's gonna fuse those pieces together obviously I'm gonna run do this in a couple of uh, rounds and first I'm gonna just tack it in a couple of spots and make sure everything is aligned and then then I'm gonna weld it in uh, um, many uh, short uh, runs and again it's uh, to allow material to cool down and to minimize the, any uh, contractions and warping um, of this uh, drive shaft uh, after it's all done um, so I I am assuming that I may at some point have to get it balanced after the job is done uh, may, maybe it all depends on how good quality of the weld I will be able to achieve you can see here on this piece you got the original weight um, applied um, but this is mostly I think to compensate for any irregularities in this heavy cast iron piece here it's it's very heavy it's the heaviest part of this drive shaft uh, the steel tube um, the stainless steel tube is pretty nice and uniform so it really doesn't really introduce any any uh, out of balancing uh, so if my weld was not very uniform uh, then it would uh, put it out of balance but it, it all depends we, we will see but uh, unfortunately I cannot show you guys uh, how I'm welding this because uh, it's so bright and I would require a special uh, filter uh, to do this but I will show you some intermediate steps so I'm gonna mount this here in place and I'm gonna tack it first into four in the four points and I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna continue the first phase of uh, welding is done as you can see I did tack it into in a couple of spots really tiny fusion welds one here, another here, another one, really tiny, uh, pretty flush, um, and uh, so far so good. Uh, I don't see any run out here that I could detect with my very simple tools. Let me slide it back into the angle. Turn it. It seems to be perfectly straight. Really nice. I'm really happy with this so far. So, anyways, I'm gonna continue welding, and I'm gonna show you the final result. Uh, as a disclaimer, uh, I, I do want to disclose that I'm not the best. TIG welder in the world. In fact, I'm an absolute beginner. I only did a couple of small projects uh, with this, but uh, getting slightly better with, with every project. So in the end, it may look awful, but <laughs> I think it will hold up, but we'll, we will see. We will see what it's going to look like. Okay, folks, uh, this is the last installment of uh, drive shaft welding. Uh, well, this all done. I welded it in eight uh, sections, and uh, it came out uh, pretty good. Let me turn it around a little bit for you, so you can see. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, as you can see, the weld is perfectly flat, flush, pretty much. There's, there's nothing I have to do with this. Uh, no grinding, no shaving, no nothing. And this is the uh, advantage of uh, fusion weld, since we are not introducing any more material in the form of filler. It is pretty much perfect to flash, but it does require some good preparation and some good precision. It's not always applicable, and uh, in all the situations, and, and also depending on the materials. Uh, I know that for stainless steel, it actually works really, really well. It's my favorite uh, material to weld so far, and like I said, I'm really beginner, uh, but uh, I like it. Uh, so yeah, 
I'm not going to be able to measure runout uh, in here precisely, but once I put it on the car, I should be able to do this. But from what I can see right now, if there is any, it's going to be very, very minimal. So shouldn't be a problem. Okay, folks, uh, until next time then.